In this video, we're going to cover pop, play, MP4. This is the method that will allow you to play MP4s in your virtual room. Uh, in the demo video, you might recall I had on the wall this screen here on the left, and it was playing uh, Back to the Future, a trailer of Back to the Future that I had picked up off the internet. You can very easily put videos into your uh, VR room, and I'm going to walk you through how to do that. I'm also going to walk you through some uh, not so obvious ways of using an MP4, as well as some tips and tricks when you're adding your MP4 into the room. So let's get started. First thing we should do is always check the wiki. The wiki tends to have uh, some of the most updated data on these methods. So the first thing we'll do is scroll down to the bottom and we'll look at the pop play mp4 method. So we can see kind of the syntax of it and I'm going to talk a little bit about it because the syntax we have the ability to organize these mp4s into a subfolder of our models directory. So I'll talk a little bit about that. But the other key thing I'd like you to see here is that in this example, we're showing two arguments we can add on, no auto and no loop. And what that means is if I add that on, I can say, do not auto play this MP4 when we enter the room. And there may be use cases for that. And I'll show you a use case for that in this video. And then no loop, which means just like it sounds, do not loop this video. Uh, play it once and that's it. Again, we'll walk through some examples. So let's go back to Blender. In Blender, I took the liberty of adding a plane to the wall uh, for showing how this works, right? Now we talked about planes in the pop launch video, and a plane is really just a 2D uh, surface, a flat surface for you to apply an image to with an image texture. And a video is the same thing because it's just a bunch of moving images. So I have this plane. And if we look in Outliner, we can see it's called Plane. Uh, I'm going to rename that so that it'll work and play uh, MP4. So pop play MP4, flip 4, and then underscore. Now, this is where I'm going to call the directory name. So room, I'm going to use a backslash since it's a directory, and then fish.mp4. So what I'm making here is one of those fish tanks in a wall. I always thought that would be cool to have in real life. I don't have it, so uh, I'm going to put it in my virtual world. Since it's a fish tank, I want it to autoplay. I don't want to have to start it. They're supposed to be alive. They're supposed to be fish. They should be playing when we walk in the room. I also want it to loop so, uh, so that they continue to run. So I am not going to use those flags in this example, but what I am going to do is use a trailing underscore and I mentioned this before, you always want to use a trailing underscore because Blender tends to add to the end uh, of your name zeros and ones and things like that that could uh, complicate things. So leaving the trailing underscore ensures that uh, you know the things that need to be read can be read here. Now, let's look at the directory structure for this. I mentioned a subdirectory. So if we look at the models directory and I scroll down, uh, we can see that I have my models. And if we go, we'll notice one of my models is called room. My demo room is just named a room. Not very original, I know. But you have to match it. So if I wanted uh, to add a movie to default or add a movie to example, I create a subdirectory called default or example. In my case, it's called room. When I go in here, I have some MP4s listed. So that's how that works. Um, now, the next thing we need to do is, in order for the video to actually show and play on this panel, we need to add a material to this. Uh, so I'm going to click on the plane, and we are going to come down here to the bottom and click on this little material properties. It looks like a little reddish globe and click new. Now we have a material that we can apply that plane to. So the next thing we want to do is go to our shading tab. Now you know even without going to the shading tab I could play this right now. I could export the model and play it. What tends to happen 
uh, is that the video, because of the way the plane was created on the wall, the video might be upside down, it might be rotated, flipped, it could be wrong in numerous ways. So I found a little trick or a tip on how to ensure that the video will look correctly when you get into VR uh, in advance. So I've selected the material up here. We're in our shading view and we have the node editor down here. So I'm going to scroll out. We should see some nodes. There they are. I'm going to highlight them and just drag them down so I can zoom in a little better. Drag them over here. I want to come to add texture image texture, drop that, and we want to connect these dots. Now the screen turned a little bit darker, you see, and I want to click open, and I want to find my model with my MP4s, and I want to put my fish in there. The other thing I do is, you'll notice it says repeat, I always put this to extend. We're not looking to repeat an image, we're looking to just simply extend what's there. So. Right now we have this video here. Uh, if I come on this side, I can select the same video to get a view of it on, on here. And you'll see why this is important. So fish MP4. This is what we would like the video to look like. But this is what we're seeing up here. So it's twisted. It's not in the right, uh, it's not in the right orientation. So up top, I'm going to make sure we're in edit mode. Right? If you're not, you press Tab, and then uh, while you're over it, you press the U key, and you'll see Unwrap is an option here. I'm going to click Unwrap, and that brings me down here where we can see just what this uh, what this this pane is really looking at. And you can see it's just capturing the water, and you kind of see that here, and it's rotated incorrectly. So the first thing I want to do is highlight this this box. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to try, um, I'm going to try actually, we're going to rotate it. So let's see if we can rotate it. All right. So there we go. Now we've rotated it. But, you know, it's not really uh, the size we want. So I'm going to move this into the middle. And I'm going to choose. Uh, a different select mode, this edge select mode. If you if you read the dialog here, you'll see it says edge select mode. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to click on this one edge, and I'm going to just pull this out to the end. And I'm going to click on this edge. I'm going to pull this out to the end. And basically what I'm doing is just resizing the view of my pane to meet the video that we're going to show. Now, one last thing I can see. Oh, let me do this. I can see uh, a corner here is not lined up. There we go. Looks a little better. Yep, and that looks good. This one could be tweaked just a tiny bit. Okay, so the other thing we can see is, look, the video clearly has the water going up over here. This is over here, so it's wrong. Um, we're going to we're going to swap that. So I'm going to mirror, I'm going to right click on it and click mirror X. But before I do that, I need to again make sure it's selected. I know it's not because it's not orange. It's not wrapped in orange. Now it's selected. I'm going to right click, mirror X, and there we have it. We see it correctly. Um, again, I'll fix that little spot here. Pull that out. And this guy in. There we go. But that looks great. Now before we export this, let's remove uh, fish mp4 because it's not really going to be exported in our model. It's external in Popper VR. That way, if we ever wanted to change that video out, all we had to do was replace it in the directory structure and, uh, and we'd be able to do that. Okay, so now we're in VR. As soon as we came into the room, the fish tank is going, okay? It just works. It's running, it'll loop, the video will loop. I didn't have to start it or stop it because I didn't use uh, the feature for no auto. And of course, if I really wanted to, I could pause it by clicking on it or I could start it up again. 
So pretty cool. So now let's go back to Blender and we'll talk about some other things we can do. Okay, we're back in Blender. And uh, just to recap, this was a, a quick example of showing using a 2D plane to play an MP4. And, um, and that's a pretty obvious example of, of doing so, right? Because it's a flat 2D image, it looks like a screen, and we're playing a movie on a screen. But there's probably plenty of other ways you could creatively use an MP4 in a 3D environment. And in talking to one person, Brit X, on Discord, he had this idea of using MP4 without an image. It was just black and it used the audio from it to play uh, ambient sounds within the room. And I thought, that's really cool. What if I took a radio and put that in my room and had it play music? So let's take a look at that example. So I'm going to go back to our layout view. And I'm just going to swing around a little bit. And you'll see I've put a, a little bit of a, a, a little radio in the room here. An antique radio that I, I found on the internet. <clears throat> now, what we're going to do is we're going to make this radio play music when we click on it. So the first thing I'm going to do is simply, um, I'm, well, I'm going to get out of edit mode by clicking tab. And I'm going to click on a part of the radio. And this will be the part that will be activated, or when I click on it with my beam, will will trigger the method. So when I come over to Outliner, you'll see I have uh, that that object is called radio. Well, we need to name that appropriately so it will play the MP4. So pop play mp4 and then underscore and then our directory name room and then a backslash and then the name of the mp4 now because this is radio uh, I don't want it to just be on when I enter the room so I'm going to do an underscore and put no auto and I don't want it to loop I want that song to play once and that's it so uh, for me, I'm going to put no loop. And then I'm going to finish it with a trailing underscore uh, to ensure that Blender doesn't mess anything up by appending zeros or ones to the end. So there we go. Now, the difference in this case than when we did the screen was, when we did the screen, I then went through, I added a material, I added an image texture to the material, I laid out the video. I don't care about the video in this case, I just want that sound. And let me show you, because there is video in this recording that I have here. You can see there's a little graphic there, a little image of it. So this will play actual video footage, but we won't see it in VR, we'll only hear the sound. Here we are in VR, and I have my radio, and if I highlight, over it, we can see it. my beam turns green, which means it's selectable. So I'm going to click on it. And our radio plays. I paused it, and I can go back and play it. So there's no video that we can see, no visual video that we can see, but the MP4 is playing the audio. So in summary, for this video, we walked through using a flat 2D plane as a screen to display an MP3 video. We also took a 3D object, a, a radio, and assigned an MP4 to that, only there were no visuals, right? There was no uh, video to watch. We really just heard the sound in that case. So two very different ways in using MP4s in Popper VR. And again, I'm interested to see in the, what the creative ways are you will come up with as you design those rooms.